Hey guys, welcome back. We should be on the internet. Um, had a momentary glitch. We're still having a technical glitch. Welcome back again. Okay. Uh, tonight, no regularly scheduled program of Wild Speculations. Tonight, we're doing another Game Master design and discussion. Um, keeping a critical role team, though, this evening. Because uh, we wanted to talk about Dunamancy. Yep. Um, and potential spells uh, that could come up. Yeah. Um, so I went through, I've been, since Matt announced Dunamancy, yeah. I've been thinking about this on and off. And all tinkering in my brain. And uh, for tonight's show, I put it on paper. Uh, so you want to um, give us a rundown of Dunamancy? I see yeah, that. so Dunamancy, I've got the Critical Role Wiki up here, and I was just going to go through the known spells. That we've had in the show that yes. we've had rumored in the show. Yes, it's kind of a start off. So we have the gift of alacrity, which is a first level spell. Target gains one d eight to their initiative rolls for eight hours. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. uh, Fortune's favor, second level spell, uh, gets a fragment of possibility, so one luck point for one hour. Is it only an hour? Yeah, I thought it was a longer duration. Nope. Um, we have immovable object, which is akin to a movable rod. It uh, locks into any point in space for up to an hour. And our first Dudamancy spell with a gold point, gold point, gold piece cost. Yes, twenty-five associated. gold pieces worth of gold dust per casting. Yep. And it, now it, we weren't given an exact level, but the wiki says it's probably a second level spell as well. Yeah, well, it, it's 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 second or third because he gave him the option of right. well, the, we, two we have, thirds we have, or a second have, and a fourth or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and it's, this one says probably second, probably fourth on the two. Yeah. Uh, the other one that's the one that's probably fourth is resonant echo, which uh, basically creates a shadow version of yourself that can cast one spell. Yeah. Um, then we also have uh, ones that are unknown spell level that have just been talked about, or we've seen cast. Yeah. You know. Which is the gravity one. Compress gravity, make a constitution saving throw on a failure, they take force damage and their speed is reduced into half for one round. Yeah. Uh, we also have vacuum blast, creatures within a 20 foot radius around the point of the caster's choosing, make a constitution saving throw on a failure, they take force damage. And are pulled toward the source, right? Yes. And then there was a, it just says a high level spell involving quantum entanglement. Which I don't remember, but yeah, I mean, evidently yeah. there was another spell mentioned, at least in passing. Hmm. So those are the ones that have been mentioned on the show. Okay. Uh... And mentioned not in the show, in Matt's uh, appearance in Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, Critical Scope had the audio from that panel. Okay. And one of the questions from the audience was about Essek and whether or not he's actually paralyzed or not. Mm. And Matt's like, I hadn't thought about that, but no, there's a different reason why he always floats. And he talked about how the two aspects of Dunamancy, um, there's gravity and there's time. Right. And Essek is a gravity specialist. And so he basically floats all the time because he laughs at gravity, essentially. Um, so I think there is a lower level version of fly that's concentration for a lot longer. 
that instead of giving you a fly speed of like 60, which I think is what the fly gives you, that it gives you your walking speed as a fly speed and you can hover. Interesting. Um, and my guess is that's why well, it could be one that just puts you so far off the ground equal to your walking speed, not actually. Yeah. And it could just be like an eight hour spell, like mage armor. Yeah. Um, um, cause I, I don't think Essek would take the time to cast that every day if it was concentration for all day. True. That's true. So I think it's probably like mage armor and you're just like, I float five feet off the ground. What you gonna do? Yep. Uh, and the other, uh, and then I also wanted to begin this discussion talking about spells that are, you can make the argument that they are dunamantic mm -hmm. in nature, even though they've been released in other schools of magic. Right. In the, well, and uh, yeah, that one uh, being a first or second level spell slot would be nothing for Essek to cast because we've already established he's at least a 15th level. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so, my list, which is by no means complete, but uh, it's everything that I could think of, and I double yep. check it with you, and you came up with one more. Right. Um, catnap. Mm -hmm. Because it compresses. An hour into in, 10 minutes. Right. It compresses time. Exactly. Uh, foresight, yeah, uh, which is a ninth level spell and gives a whole list of benefits, advantage on basically everything. Uh, it, it's basically looking into the future, to yeah. the possibilities. Exactly. Um, slow and haste, right? Um, same kind of thing, messing with time. Tensor's floating disc. Mm -hmm. um, it's not exactly gravity manipulation. But it kind of is because it will carry up to 500 pounds right. for you. Um, reverse gravity. It's in the title. Yeah. Uh, fly, as I mentioned, and uh, and you you said catapult. Right. Uh, so all these kind of telekinetic things could certainly be reflavored. Yeah. Uh, well, catapult is just like changing gravity. The direction yeah, for of that one object, the one object. Yeah. You know. Yep. Gravity now is that for you, object. Gravity is down to that guy. Um, yeah. What we haven't seen from Matt are any Dunamancy cantrips. Right. And I have two. Okay. That I've come up with. And one of them is in regards to our discussion that we have had since Laura and Talison picked up guidance. And it's, I call it, uh, temporal flutter. Okay. Uh, instead of like the butterfly effect, temporal flutter. That's where I got the name from. Uh, somatic component. Self is target. So you can't target anybody else. Okay. Uh, concentration up to one minute. Okay. And my first draft was you can add a d4 to any ability check, saving throw, or attack. Okay. Um, but I sort of trimmed that down to just ability checks to make it more like guidance. Um, so it's guidance, but for yourself only. And you can use it multiple yes. times. Also in my first drafting of that can trip. So shouldn't we have put guidance in the reflavoring? I suppose, yeah, that's a good argument. Uh, so my first draft of this, it was a reaction, not an action. Mm. And it wasn't concentration. But the trigger wasn't anything in world. The trigger was you have to make a, you fail an ability check or you fail a, like you roll a d20, now you can cast this spell as a reaction and add a d4 to it. I actually like that better. It plays more with the fortune, the you know, the fortune point, luck point aspect that he's shown us already. That's true. I just the reason I, I the reason I changed and it, it differentiates it from guidance more. Yes, then that's that's one of the reasons why. I, yeah, all these things are why I designed it that way initially first. The reason I changed it is because most of the reaction spells mm -hmm. 
are an in-game trigger and you rolling a d20 is not an in or sorry an in-universe trigger rolling the d20 is not an in-universe trigger true um, and maybe it's because i just didn't spend enough time thinking about how to word the trigger for the reaction to be in universe um maybe worded as you fail at a task roll the cast the spell as a reaction roll a d4 and that yeah. the result well, i mean I, I would word it probably like the um war cleric war domain cleric where when someone makes an attack roll and fails they can add the plus 10 to it just Yeah. I mean, it's essentially that, but a d4 instead of adding 10. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Part of me balks at that just because it's it's so different from everything else. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a new school of magic, so it's, some of that stuff's going to have to happen, I think. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, so if you like the reaction... And add a d4 to whatever d20 you just that's, rolled. That's, I, I think it. I mean, either one I like. Yeah. I, I personally, I think it makes it more unique and not just. Guidance for wizards. Guidance for wizards, yeah. <laughs> Fair. Uh, the other cantrip that I came up with uh, is gravity based. I call this heavy hitter. Um, and as part of the spell casting action, you make a melee attack. Mm -hmm. So it's like booming blade, rain right. flame blade. Yeah. Um, the target makes a strength save, or they are pushed or knocked prone. Um, and it's a somatic and verbal component. Uh, and probably, well, I didn't, I didn't want to mandate a material component. Well, the material component would just be the weapon you're using. Yeah, but I also want this to be fist capable. Okay. okay. Where technically those ones are not. Right. Um, but I like the idea, basically, of a dunamancist. You know. Well, see, and the image that sparks in my mind is the traditional the, the trope. Um, where the wizard just slams his staff into the ground, and everyone. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, maybe a higher level spell, you know. You do that, everyone gets pushed, you know, 10 feet yeah. and falls prone on a failed save. On a successful save, they get pushed 5 feet and then don't go prone. Yeah. You know, just everybody immediately adjacent to you has to make the save or go back. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so that one, I didn't put any damage on that. Just because... No, it's just the weapon damage. Yeah. Yeah, the, the spell is the gravity forcing them back and down. Right. Um, exactly. Just adding the gravity to the weapon. Right. Um, and I like the control aspect of it. Um, I do like that one a lot. Uh, so, this is another thing. In designing a new school of magic and that is do you design a spell for every spell level um, and there is debate on that mm -hmm. um, on one hand if you are because the wizard gets the benefit based on the school that they are in you want to be able to give them an opportunity at every level to take advantage of that from a game design perspective. But the other side of that coin is... Well, that just means you need to have 20 spells, you know, or so 10, you know, 15 to 20 spells. Yeah. They don't have to be of every spell level. You just need them for each level to have something to find and copy down. Well, every... Yeah, first through ninth level spells. Um... And thus far, Matt hasn't shown us that yet. Right. Um, although I have a feeling that is that will be in the next book that they put out. Yes. 
Um, yes, I am still. <laughs> Since when, before the campaign actually started, I've been saying, when are we getting the Wild Mountain? And, and, and probably not until their 15th to 17th. Month. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll be around episode 95 to 100 that they announce it, like last time. But um, I still want it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this spell... I designed to either be first or second level. Okay. Um, and I call it null gravity. Okay. Uh, components, verbal, somatic, and material. Uh, scale weight. Okay. Uh, worth um, 25 gold pieces. Made of gold, basically. Um, action. Concentration up to one hour. Creature or object is the target, uh, up to a medium size, and you decrease their weight to one-tenth of whatever it is. Uh, higher spell slots, you can increase the size of the object that you affect. Okay. Hmm. So that basically would allow you to uh, so if it's first level, say, at second level, you can cast it on a large size statue and reduce its weight yeah, to a tenth. It's, it's circumventing encumbrance. Yes. Well, no, I have a different one that does that. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> circumventing. It's now weighs less. I can carry it now. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Um, but my, my initial thought and design for the spell was... Um, we need to move this. There's a statue blocking a doorway, or there's a door. Cast it on the door. It's like a big stone door. Now you can lift it. Mm. Um, on the that, list, yeah. Yeah, that was sort of my design headspace for that. Not necessarily encumbrance. Encumbrance was a, is a no. Spell coming what up. what we what you could do is instead of null gravity, uh, like change gravity. Kind of like reduce and large, to where you could also choose to increase the weight. Uh, yeah, I have that too. Okay, that's a different spell. But it's, I see where you're going, and we, and this could do that. Um, but I do have that later. Yes. Yeah, I, I would almost you know, like. But I didn't make it part of the same spell because the increase one actually does damage. Hmm. Because when you were being crushed by gravity, that's it's essentially the same as a whale becoming beached. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want that as, as part of the same spell. That's why I okay. separated that, it. That's fair. Um, so from first, second level spell area, with a bonus for extra spell slots. Mm -hmm. uh, Go, going back, sorry, real quick. If I reduce the weight of a creature, do they get any benefits? Like, can they now jump higher because they're not as restricted by gravity? Yes. I hadn't thought about that, but yes. I was just trying to think, why that am I going think... to cast that on a creature? Well, my thought was so that you could throw them. Fastball special. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this 30-pound yeah. this halfling now weighs 3 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> the Goliath wizard chucking the halfling barbarian. I love it. That needs to be a thing in one of our games now. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I guess um, technically, yeah, their their jump distance would probably be triple. Yeah. Um, maybe even more than that, but I don't want to. I would say double, triple at most. Yeah, well, I don't want to step on the toes of... Uh, jump? Yeah. Which I think triples your jump distance. So double it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so from that first, second level spell, I now have an eighth or ninth level spell. Okay. Uh, Go all across the board. Yes. The, my notes are very much sort of stream of consciousness. It's like... So I, I thought of this spell, I thought of this spell, and I sort of went back in time 
and my ideas and then sort of and then added levels too. and then added yeah stuff so yeah level wise these are not organized at all <laughs> um <laughs> uh turn back time is what i've called this one in this first draft a little homage to share yeah uh action to cast verbal somatic and material mm -hmm. a timepiece worth at least ten thousand gold pieces which the spell consumes wow you get a big benefit for this though well it's I, probably no. game break okay uh you rewind time by up to one minute You and up to your intelligence modifier and creatures are aware of the events you have undone. So essentially, if you're facing a TPK, so essentially it's the Omega Thirteen. Yes. yes. <laughs> Only the Omega Thirteen was thirteen seconds. Yes. <laughs> Two rounds. This basically, I'm like it's ten rounds. Yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah but it's essentially, I'm going to undo this boss I'm, fight. I'm sorry. <laughs> Galaxy Quest is what I thought of, and that's fair. Um, but yeah, I, I want to, yeah, so I took the, I wanted an expensive component because yeah. it's can't be something you do all the time. Right. Um, and I made it a minute to turn back because that's essentially your whole TP, your party wipe. You've that's undone your, it. It's, yeah. Pretty much the, the battle. Yeah. For the most part. Um, cause as Liam observed in episode 70, uh, 79? Was that when, yeah. yeah, when they fought the tree. Uh, or when they were facing the tree. He's like, And he was tasked with casting the spell that took a minute to cast. Yeah, He's like, we have never had a fight go ten rounds. And Although Kurt Rulestad said that that was wrong. Yes. Well, we said that was wrong. Yeah. Um, but yes. They actually had the stats and the citations. Yes. <laughs> it's more valid coming from them. Yes. It's more impressive coming from us because we didn't have that. We don't track that. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it's essentially undoing the boss fight that you guys just got your ass handed to you. And I put in the bit about you and your intelligence modifier and creatures can know about the changes so that when you do it, there's no metagaming involved yeah. with the player at the table. You can just say, part, the, you know, yeah. these people in the party or all the party know. That we just got our ass handed to us and exactly what happened and you can either choose to run away at that point or go in with a different battle strategy and at that point the gm's job is to go okay we'll see each other everyone next week <laughs> because that's probably a session ending spell yeah um that's that's your cliffhanger spell uh to go okay we just spent you know three or four hours in this boss fight and we're gonna pick this up next week with exactly 10, the same point we started this week <laughs> right Ten thousand gold you saved your tpk um and it doesn't guarantee it's not gonna happen again that's true um but yeah yeah i like it uh next one is definitely a ninth level and that is rewrite history. This is the spell that Caleb's looking for. Yes. I don't know if I have limited it enough or if it's too broad or what, but here it is. Uh, one hour casting time. Okay. Uh, verbal, somatic, and material. And I'm, I don't know, I'm sort of up in the air with this. I wanted different things to be used in the spell casting, but I don't know. I'm not married to these, but basically Quicksilver worth 8,000 gold pieces. So Mercury, right? Um, a Sphinx's eye. Okay. And a 10,000 gold piece bowl or chalice. These are to contain your Mercury. Um, and incense and chalks worth 5,000 gold pieces. Uh, the spell's going to consume the incense and chalk, and I think the quicksilver, but not the bowl. Or the eye. Or does it consume the eye? Or the eye. Yeah, probably, probably not the eye. 
Um, like I say, this one's the most in flux. This is the one I'm the most unsure about. Because this is where the last one was session changing. This one is campaign. Yeah. Um, you change up to 10 minutes of events within your own lifetime. And the DM decides what those changes brought. So you can basically choose 10 minutes in your life, sometime in your life, and change what happened there. So Caleb can be like, we didn't burn down my parents. Yeah, or like Flash, at Flashpoint, goes back in time and saves his mother. Mm -hmm. Or in Flash, Flash goes back in time and, and stops, stops himself from saving his mother. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. So... Uh, but that gets expensive with this smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not just uh, calories that he's burning. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's the big one. And that one, the limitations I put on it are basically, I took from Modify Memory. Okay. Because Modify Memory allows you to change up to 10 minutes. Right. Uh, so I like taking that idea of changing that 10 minutes. Uh, so you can either, you know, let an event take place, but go in and save somebody. Because really for Caleb, for the time stream to remain intact, Caleb must believe that he killed his parents. But Caleb can go back and rescue them from the fire. Mm. Because if Caleb doesn't believe he killed his parents, then he never goes on to learn the journeymancy and doesn't learn the spell, and everything sort of unravels. No, we we've already established that journeymancy is based in the, you know, multiple worlds thread, and it's just yes, that's true. A, di a different one of those aspects. Uh, Snoopy Ace, uh, tenth level, no because there are no 10th level. But in theory, Matt has indicated that only one person has ever cast a spell like that. Um, now, in the narration that we have of that though, the guy actually left. Mm -hmm. In this, and the long text description of it, the wizard doesn't actually leave. Right. Um, they just change time. They just change that event. Um, it's basically like using a wish spell. Yeah. I wish that this had happened instead. Um, so from that ninth level spell, certainly ninth level spell, uh, the next one's a third or fourth level spell. I haven't landed on okay. exactly which one. And I think there's a version of this that's different. But as I drafted it, uh, re-education okay. is what I call the spell. It's a 10 minute casting time, has an eight hour duration, um, verbal, somatic, and material, and a mirror worth a thousand gold pieces, which if you have the scry spell, you probably already have. Mm -hmm. uh, or you will have this before you get scry, because that this mirror could act as your scry focus right um but basically it allows you to trade your proficiencies around uh skill for skill tool for tool um allows you to play with what you're good at because basically you're changing your changing your past to have trained in a different area and you have those memories for this Duration. Nice. Um, there, like as I said, there's a different version of this where you cast the spell and you just have the proficiency. Well, that's I know that's a knowledge cleric domain feature. Yeah, yeah. Channel. Yeah, so you, one of their channel, channel domains. Domains, You can gain proficiency. But I think theirs is only for a minute or something. I think like it's that. ten minutes. Yeah, it's not very long. Right. Where this idea that I have, yeah, it's a long duration. 
Um, but yeah. And that one I don't think is particularly game-breaking at all. Um, no, because you're losing the old proficiencies. Right. And you're just changing them out for a day. Yeah. Uh, and I mentioned to you, I said, I asked him, I said, do you think it's too broken to just change your class? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, for a duration, you completely change your character sheet. Um, there's a rote in uh, Mage the Awakening that is, it's a time five rote. And yeah, you just rearrange all the dots on your character sheet. Um, and I thought that could be an ultimate expression. Um, and if there's a ninth level version of this sort of re-education idea, that would be the ninth level version. Yeah, I, I still say we need to be a permanent thing and not just for a duration. But, uh, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you get to either be X for a while and then go back with all your remaining spell slots still intact, or you get to blow through everything. Well, that's why I say it's, still be the useful. duration could be until you finish a long rest. Because if that's your the duration of the spell, then that negates all your all of those concerns, the resource management aspects. Mm -hmm. Other than you said you could blow all of your spells before casting mm -hmm. it, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking of the quantum campaign. So you cast water breathing on everybody. You you cast these spells that you know don't require concentration, take a long time on all of the people. You know, buff everybody up, and then you flip. And now you're all super prepared and you haven't wasted anything. I mean, on one hand, applaud the player for that. <laughs> I mean, that's immediately where my mind went. Uh, but like to me, that's that's where the real superpowers of Dunamancy come in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's that, Like I said, that, that one is requires more tinkering. And play testing for sure, and also you can have the component of that be pricey. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you can make it like Heroes Feast. I, I six think, grand of casting. I think that's something needs, that we need to come out in a couple of years when the power creep catches up. To that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think the power creep's quite there yet. Well, I mean. It's, yeah. it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the next one is something we've talked about previously. Uh, temporal scrying. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so, it'd be a fifth level. Uh, so, this is fifth plus. So, where scrying doesn't have a higher level bonus, mm -hmm. if you cast it on a higher level, this does. Right. Um, so, just like scry, it's ten minute casting time. Concentration up to 10 minutes. Um, and again, a focus worth 1,000 gold. So basically that that all's just like Scry. Uh, but you can see into a location's past. Um, the limitation of the text, if I were to write this out, you have to be there. Yeah. Um, so whatever location you are in, or whatever person you are with, you can choose a point in time or object. Um, you can choose a point in time. Where was this, or what was happening here mm. at this time? Uh, and at fifth level, it's in the uh, up to twenty four hours in the past. Okay. Uh, at higher levels, it, further back. So at sixth level, you can see a week. At seventh. A month, at eighth, a year, and at ninth, up to a century. I like it. Um, uh, you know, post cognition has always been something that I've liked as an ability. You know, of yeah. Stars. It's super useful, um, and can. And this is one of those spells that. As we were saying, uh, the higher level spells just 
take shortcuts. Yeah. So if you have a character with this spell, your whodunit is about to be fixed real quick. Yep. Oh, <laughs> this is what he killed him with? Let me see. Oh, okay, it was this guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, there are things, of course, that you can do in the narrative to change all that. The killer's mask, so when they, if they're at the crime scene and they go back to when the crime took place, they're concealed. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so there's things that you can still do in the narrative, but this basically... Yeah, but then you have a description the, of the costume. Maybe. Right, right. It, it, it will give them a shortcut to the end. Uh, so, yeah. careful if you add this <laughs> into your games. And, you know, just definitely your style. I like to think mine of uh, running a game and you bringing that up in the misdirection of DMP. Yeah, it's just. Uh, did you ever watch the Two Stupid Dogs cartoon? Not religiously, but. I only yes. saw a few of them. But there's one where they were just like, it's a shortcut! 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 And they're going through, and they end up going through this construction site and they get lost and turned all around and <laughs> makes it's it ten times longer. <laughs> Yes, because there's also a possibility that the killer has cast the sky self. Yeah. Uh, so now you, I saw you do it. You saw someone who looked like me do it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, this next one, speaking of going all over the place in levels, uh, temporal shock. Okay. Action, somatic, and material, uh, a hand mirror, no gold point cost, just the small mirror that you can get in the uh, adventuring gear. Um, one creature, wisdom save, or they age 1d10 years and take 2d8 psychic damage. Okay. Or if they succeed, they take half damage and they don't age. Okay. And at higher levels, uh, the damage increases by 1d8 and the age by 1d10. So the ninth level version of this is 11d8 psychic. Or, no. 10d8 psychic and 9d10 years. So ninth level, basically a ninth level spell will age and kill a normal human. Just about. Yeah. Um, and this one, the Sphinx can do this. There's an undead or demon or devil. Uh, several of them that can age you. Yeah. One of them is, you age this long. By the way, make a con save. You fail, you die. Yeah. Um, so... I thought about throwing that into this spell, but I'm like, for a first level spell, save or die? No. 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 <laughs> save or die needs to be seven level or higher. Yeah. Um, I would almost make it 1d10, 1d8 at first level. And increase. Or, what, yeah, 1d8 psychic. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Either um, that or start it at second level. With one ten two d eight. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe uh, D six psychic and two D four years. Yeah. Per spell level. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think when I first wrote the damage and everything, it, I was thinking second level. But I was like, eh, pay least psychic damage. You can start it at first. Um, and then my last one, uh, weight of the world. Uh, this is second level. Okay. Plus. Or just second level, I think. 
Yeah, second level. Um, action to cast verbal and somatic components. One creature or object. Uh, the creature and its gear now weigh ten times what they did. Uh, concentration up to a minute. They have to make a con save or they fall prone and they're taking 2d6 uh, bludgeoning damage. And as a bonus action on your subsequent turns, you can inflict the damage again and force the prone check. Do they get the save each time? Yeah, I think so. I Well, I think for balance, yes, you give them the con save to remain not prone, but they still take the damage, whether they go prone or not. Uh, but on the other hand, it's really fun, I think, to cast this spell and just as a bonus action on your turn, because they failed the first time, poof, they're down. They're prone no matter what. Yeah. Because they're... and Well, actually, no. I think, yeah. If they fail the save, bonus action, you drop them prone. Yeah. They take the damage. Because it's just like Heat Metal does 2d6 fire damage, and you have disadvantage on everything while you're taking that damage. Yeah. Uh, and using up half their movement every turn is less onerous than you have disadvantage on everything. So. So should it be third level, like Heat Metal? Heat Metal second. Is it? You're right, it is. Yep. Why was I thinking it's third? It's one of my favorite Because you get it at third. Yeah. You get it at third level. <laughs> Brain's mixing up the <laughs> number of switch. Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, those are my version of Dudamancy spells. I think we are, we'll see some version of those, I think. I, I think you get a pretty good grasp, you know, yeah. a few things I would, you know, and I voice, yeah. you know, some change. Yeah. Um, but that's just another perspective looking at the same thing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, temporal magic especially is always tricky. Yeah. In games. Um, well, in any storytelling media. Actually. Yeah, but time travel <laughs> always screws it over. <laughs> uh, one uh, last few minutes. I had an idea, and Matt has introduced tattoo magic. Yeah. And that will probably be a section in the book as well. Uh, and he talked briefly about that at the Sweden convention, his panel there. But I had an idea where instead of the infusing gems and stuff to give you an attribute booster like what Matt has with Orly, mm -hmm. uh, what if you can use tattoos as arcane focuses? Yeah. Or as components that don't cost gold. Yeah. Essentially make your skin a tapestry of your component pouch. Yeah, and I like that idea. I would the one thing I would say is like, at least for me for role playing, like as casting you would have to touch the part of the tattoo that represents the component yeah. of that spell. So it's not like you can have them all hidden, so you have to physically touch it. Yeah. Um yeah, and that gives you your uh, your tattooed warrior kind of thing, and you know tattoos on the face, neck, arms. arms. Yeah, yeah, or they or they go shirtless. Yeah, so that they can touch the different ones. Um, yeah, and you you made the comment of tattoo of a copper wire from here to here for message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I would do. <laughs> Just because yeah. I think it's funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I like the idea of, like, uh, you know, a feather here mm -hmm. or here for feather fall. Yep. Um, uh, or, like, you can do, like, a yin, or, yeah, a yin-yang 
sulfur guano yeah. ball uh, for your fireball. Yep. Um, yeah. So just an idea that I had wanted to throw out there, and it's, it's tangentially connected to critical roles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, have you thought of any other possible Junomancy stuff? Uh, time and gravity. Uh, do you have anything? No. Um, you know, I think that pretty much covers, like, like I said, I hadn't written anything down because I've never really designed my own spells before. But a lot of those are along the lines of things I was thinking. So Yeah. Um, uh, I think next time we do this and we don't have a critical role or tox mocking episode, uh, we may dip into, uh, after our last race design discussion, uh, where we talked about the uh, Egyptian mm -hmm. races, uh, after that we talked about the Xanth series. Xanth, yeah. Uh, and we did some design on that. Um, also, let me know if you guys want me to type these out, and maybe I'll I'll do that and put it in a Google Doc or something. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's it for tonight. And we will, this Thursday is episode 80. Yep. Uh, we will be enjoying that. Um, and we will... Be good to each other. See you guys. Yes.